Did you hear that? Recording is in progress. <laughs> it's got recording. It. I, got, I got the message. <laughs> You're on. So this is it. Episode number three, season two, the Fitness Whisperer podcast. And I may actually parallel publish this to wellness and weight loss for women and men. So you didn't think I was going to flip it on this fast, did you? <laughs> no, I knew you were. <laughs> All right, because we got to get the realism of this. So whoever mm -hmm. is tuning in, I'm going to give you some context here. I have with me the fitness nurse, Lauren Lilly. And if, 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 if you listening or watching uh, have been following along, you know that Lauren is our daily poster in the Facebook group for the daily accountability check-in post, which as we record this in real time, uh, July 25th, 2021, fitness nurse, Lauren Lilly, the, the post today said, these are, what is it? Your six, six doctors, the six best doctors. Mm -hmm. Did you, did you count how many things were actually on, on the post? <laughs> yes. How many? I did. How many? Six. No, there's not. Five. There's five. seven. Five. There's five. I didn't even <laughs> count it. I don't, I get those on, online. So. It's all good. It's all good. Cause number six is good nutrition. Food. Yeah. yeah. Food. Well done. Well <laughs> done. All right. So here we are. Anybody following along knows that Lauren and I did a full podcast episode. That was about a year ago, right? Or no. Yeah. Right. It was in, it was in like July 1st area. Okay. All right. So July. So it's about a year ago. And that was your what was it? Your three or four month progress? It was like eight weeks. I think it was like eight or nine weeks. That's crazy. All right. So here we are like a year yeah. later doing the mm -hmm. one year progress update. And so much has happened in the, in the past year. Has it not? Yeah. A lot has happened <laughs> All right, in a good so, way. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know how much we're going to cover today, but being that you're the co-host of the podcast, we're going to have more episodes. To I'm, a, I'm your official co-host. Okay. Yeah, like it or not, you're the official co-host <laughs> because I've got like a list of things we need to be talking about over the next few months mm -hmm. that are going to require the nurse's expertise. The nurse who is going to school for a master's degree right now while you're working. Yeah. What's that master's degree in? Um, I will have a nurse educator master's degree. Awesome. And that's no joke to get. Like you're working really, really hard for that master's degree. It's been a beating, honestly, <laughs> but awesome. it, it's, it's going to be worth it in the end. Yeah, no doubt. So not only is she a registered nurse, but she's going to school for a master's degree. She is the fitness nurse because she lives the lifestyle of an actual person and nurse who does take care of herself, which is what many of them do not do. So it's one of the reasons why she's come this far. It's another reason why she's the official co-host of the podcast, because we've got a lot to teach people, to help people. Nurses help people, right? But fitness nurses help people in a different way, right? So we're going to be leaning into that because we want to prevent people from having to go to the doctor, get sick, be on medication. We want them to prevent all that, right? Mm -hmm. We're going to be talking more about that in future episodes. We're going to be covering things that have to do with natural supplementation, better nutrition, sleep habits, uh, improving your life with things that are not directly related to exercise per se or, or eating properly, but from a whole life perspective. How do you make your health better when looking at your whole life uh, uh, in, uh, from a perspective of all the things that are involved in your life, right? That means the people you surround yourself with, the things you actually do, the things you plan to do, uh, everything's tied together. So we're gonna be going into a lot of that. But today, I know we have uh, a time clock to be on because you've got a nail appointment, don't you? Uh, my self-care Sunday. That's, that's it, that's, every another, two weeks. that's another thing every right two there, self-care, right? What are the things that make you feel good? Hey, if one of them is pampering yourself in certain ways, you got to put it in the schedule. So you need to be done here in about what, 40 minutes, 30 yes. minutes. All right. So, so we're going to, 
we're going to get into it. Um, anybody new here, if you want to connect with us, you got to start with the freebies that we have for you. And you can go get your freebies and join our free group simply by going to fitnesstraining.live, fitnesstraining.live. Just type it in like it sounds, fitnesstraining.live. That gets you the freebie program to start. It gets you the link to our free group. And then from there, it opens up the whole world to you. On de depending on how far you want to go with us, you'll get future episodes of the podcast, future videos, coaching call replays, et cetera, et cetera. So fitness nurse, I think what we're going to do, being that you're on a tight schedule, we're going to, we're going to skip past uh, some of the coaching uh, success points from the other clients. We'll cover those on a future episode. Okay. okay. I want to make sure we get in your story. Before we get into that, though, can you believe, and that we're, of course, this is going to go into one of the next episodes. Can you believe how long we've been talking about covering my last health exam and the numbers and the vitals and all that? Yeah. Do you it's, know? It's my fault. It's my it's, fault, though. No, I know it no, is. It's not anybody's fault. It's just life. But there's a reason for it. Next, next month is my next one. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be able to cover several years worth of results in one podcast well, episode. Okay. okay. Yeah. So it's going to be a lot of fun because I've been experimenting with certain things over the past year that may or may not have an impact on the new vital numbers. So it's going to be fun to get those done and share them on one of the, the next upcoming episodes. So the gist of today's topic is you. It's your story. It's the one-year progress update that needs to be shared with anybody listening because your story proves what can be done. Number one, when you don't give up. Number two, when you find the right plan and program. And number three, when you stick to it. So let's do, you know, basically, you're going to be talking a lot from here forward. So let's give the listener, a short summary of how you found me, what got, what got you started, and then let's do a fast forward into how you got to this point now. Um, and I will mention, we will link to the first episode we did, which was basically your eight or nine weeks uh, in mm -hmm. progress update. All right, we will link to that so you could see where she was at then, where she's at now. You're definitely more relaxed and natural on cam right now. And I can tell you're feeling <laughs> good <laughs> as compared to that, that, that first one, which is awesome. Well done. So okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hand the mic to you. So let's start this, the story when it started. Give us the synopsis uh, of that day one and let's go from there. Um, so last year during COVID, uh, so around, I think what, March is when I found you on Facebook. Um, and when I first, of course, when I first found you, I thought, oh, this looks way easy. And I just like scrolled past you. <laughs> so the second time around, I actually saw you, like, it's like the very next day and I, you know, saw you again. And so I kind of like clicked on the video and just wanted to listen to what you were saying. So after that, like not really watching you, but listening to what you had to say, everything made sense to me. Um, so that's whenever I signed up for, well, they called it the white list at that time, you, or you did, but now it's, it's ultimate leg, but hip and thigh makeover. Um, within like, you know, just a few weeks of doing that, I knew that it was different and I ended up getting into total access. And um, since I think I've been in total access for over a year now. I have a home gym now. <laughs> yes, the Sculpt to Fit home gym That's system good. over my shoulder here. She's got one of her own. Yeah. And when I first started, you know, I was, um, my goals were pretty much the same as most women. Uh, basically you want to look better. You want to feel better about yourself and be able to like wear whatever clothes you want to wear. Um, and those were, those are nice goals, but, um, over the last year, like my mindset is really, really different. And, um, that's not my primary goal anymore. Um, the look part is just like what you always say is a bonus. Mm -hmm. And it comes uh, with time and it comes with um, you focusing on what's more important in life. So um, health and wellness and the inside <laughs> comes first. And that's kind of like where I'm at right now, a year later, over a year later. Right, right. 
awesome summary. So, uh, so when when you when you first saw that first mini video ad, right? Or maybe somebody shared it with you. I don't know. It's probably an ad though. Um, you were at like a legit starting point. Now, again, anybody listening to this new, let's give them context. You, you're no, you were no newcomer to fitness. Like you've spent years in the gyms doing the traditional stuff, right? Tell us a little bit about that. Mm -hmm. I've always been an athlete. I've always been into like working out and eating healthy. Um, what really happened is the past five years, you know, I've been a nurse and it's a really, really stressful career. Um, and I kind of fell into this, like, I don't even know what you would call it, but um, where I was neglecting myself because I was more or less focused on my job and taking care of other people. Like you kind of get lost in that. And you know, you, there's a mental and emotional part to nursing that nobody really understands. Um, of course, it's very physical too. It's long hours and all that stuff, but there's a mental and emotional part as well. And I'm a, I'm a very like emotional person. So there was a lot of times that I would deal with my patients or take it home with me. Mm. And basically like I started just kind of emotional eating and um, for a good two years, I was kind of stuck in this, in this spot um, of emotional eating. I was not really working out and taking care of myself the way that I was um, prior to being a nurse. And so I basically gained, I gained some weight really fast. I was working night shifts the first couple of years of my nursing career, which that alone is not healthy. Um, and then you combine that with, you know, emotional eating and you're skipping workouts. Um, I had, a, I had a back injury. I had my right knee that I injured um, in the gym. So those injuries were like really exacerbated during that time because I wasn't moving as much. Right. Like I was just working all the time and I and wasn't when I, yeah. And I was gaining weight. And whenever I was going to the gym, I was still doing the heavy lifting. And so it was still like hurting my knee and my back. Mm -hmm. um, so that's really what happened to me. Like, honestly, I just allowed my career to make my choices for me. And that was, that was the wrong thing to do. Right. Um, when I found you, like I was very, I was very much in a place where I needed a change in my life and you came at the right time. Um, and during COVID, like we couldn't go to the gyms. Mm -hmm. So, so it was, it was life changing for me to find this program and I don't even go to the gym anymore. <laughs> so right. um, even, I train at home. Right. Right. So not even going to the gym, getting the best results of your life, which we're going to get into specifics shortly here. Um, so for the new listener, let that sink in. Lauren was training, quote unquote, traditional conventional gym style, doing the heavy stuff, training hard, following the trainer mythology that you got to lift heavy to get the results. You got to, you know, push your body if you want it to change. Right. So all that pushing and hard, grueling work got you some, some injuries, um, yeah. which, which defeats the whole purpose of taking care of yourself in the first place. Like, your, as I say, your fitness should help you, not hurt you. So you developed the injuries. You were grinding yourself away. Uh, work got in the way. Nursing, emotional eating. We're both empaths. We know that. We've spoken about this before. When you're an empath, you absorb a lot more of the emotional um, energies from from other people and and what you're what you're working on with them uh, and it could wear you down so that was wearing you down you were eating more exercising less working the night shift what was what was do you remember the highest weight you got up to um it was like 225 i think i was actually closer to 230 but i I don't really, I was staying away from the scale. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, I remember those I'm, days for me. Uh, yeah. I, I've been I'm, you know, I'm myself. six foot. Yeah. You know, I'm six foot. So. You are? But still, that was not, yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> six feet tall. All right. Uh, two, yeah, two. Still, that's, that's not a good weight. No, it was not a good no, weight. No, 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 no. Two, 225, 230. Um, dangerous. And so. Tell me about the word cellulite. Like, um, what did the word cellulite mean to you? How would you describe it uh, as far as it pertains to you and, and the, any other women listening who think they have cellulite that they're dealing with? 
Ugh. Cellulite. Well, um, it's like the dimple, the dimples, ripples, like all the lumps and bumps on your, usually it's your legs for women. Legs, butt, um, eyes, lower body, trouble zones. Yeah. Yeah. And I hate it. <laughs> Did it get worse on you as, as you gained a lot of the, the weight? Absolutely. I mean, it was more, I think it was more the, the food part that made it worse. Mm. And of course me working the long hours and not being hydrated and, you know, just basically, and I really do think it has a lot to do with diet. Like my diet was not the best mm -hmm. during that time. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, I started this program for that reason to reduce it and to feel better. And it's, I mean, it's like going away almost so, 80% gone. So, so. The, the cellulite verbiage was one of the things that helped catch your attention. Yeah, in the for sure. Stages. All right. So, so including the cellulite, let's talk about, um, bef before we get into the emotional mental mind shift, which is really important. We're going to talk about this on future episodes because I've got some more amazing things unfolding behind the scenes with some other clients that, that every person needs to hear. Everybody needs to hear. Uh, but you've experienced your own over this past year. Uh, but let's first talk about physical, visible, obvious changes in your body. Uh, the cellulite also specifics, um, and anything else you want to add to that in regards to the physical part? Well, I started seeing changes early on. Um, I think that's just because, you know, I have that fitness background. So I did have, um, some big changes early on in the program. And then over the last, I would say six months, it's just gotten even better. Um, my legs are smoothing out, uh, the front of my legs, I had like a couple of trouble areas, like little, like there was one dent on my one leg, I think it's my right leg, and I can't even see it anymore. Wow. I mean, my front, my the front of my legs are great. Right. The back of my legs are the more of a problem area, but I mean, it's like eighty percent gone. I mean, I posted my pictures, you know, yeah, yeah, um, sure. our one product. year pictures on right. our group, so right, it's it's a huge difference. Um, yeah. Just just the size of my thighs are it's a huge difference. I had one leg that was, you know, a little atrophied than the other. I think that was where my knee injury came in. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's completely gone. I mean, they're both like symmetrical now basically. Wow. So, and my strength is different. I mean, the right, my right leg was my weak leg. It's no longer like a weak leg. I mean, they're mm -hmm. both about the same, which right. is awesome. Yeah. I mean, I can tell a huge difference because of how we train, we train, you know, unilaterally. So, yes. um, yeah, I can tell a difference in my strings. Awesome. So, yeah, I mean, your your progress photos, thank you for sharing those, by the way. I have a lot of women who they'll send me their progress photos specifically of cellulite in addition to the other body changes. And they'll ask me, you know, I don't, I don't, I would prefer that you don't share these, you know, in Facebook or on the internet or whatever. These are for you to see that, yes, this has worked for me. I've made incredible progress. My friends are all asking me, you know, how, did, how did you change your body that way? How did you get rid of the dimples, ripples, and shadows? So whenever somebody does share their photos openly, uh, I'm very grateful for that. Um, and I've got more of them actually we're going to be posting soon. But yours, like when you look at them, even in the photos, which are really hard to capture the improvements sometimes because of the trickiness of the light and the angle and and uh, the place you're standing, you could definitely see a major, major improvement, uh, definite smoothing, definite uh, reduction in the shadows and the ripples and dimples. Uh, but the way you describe it verbally makes it even more obvious that, you know, seeing the 80% improvement uh, is, is uh, proof that the concept behind how this training is done, how it changes not only the muscles, but the connective tissue, the fascia layers, the nerves. Um, actually, the nerves are part of the reason why you're experiencing an evening out of your strength. A lot of that's neurological as well. Because of the unilateral training, yes, the muscles get effective, but so do the neurons, the nerve, the brain, brain to muscle connections. Um, but yeah, the, the photos are awesome. I'm looking forward to the next ones, maybe in six months or so. Uh, that's going to be, it looks, I think it looks so much better in person too. I mean, I don't even notice it anymore. Um, uh, I mean, there's days that I like kind of like check, you know, cause you're, we're women, like that's what we do, but 
most of the time I don't even look at it anymore. And I, it just, it's hardly noticeable in person. Right. That's the main thing for me. Like the pictures, of course, everybody has a bad angle and in, in photos, you know what I mean? And mm-hmm. especially when the lighting is way above and it's shining down. I mean, that's where we, <laughs> where we like the bathroom lighting. I mean, you know what I mean? So it definitely looks better in person. Right. It's so right. much better. Awesome. So, um, all right. So in terms, so that's, uh, what, what's your weight at now? I have lost 36 pounds. So I'm at 180. Wow. Okay. So this is awesome. You know, so, so, so the net loss is 36. You've had, yeah. when we talk about body composition, right. Cause that's a big, big word here. We're not just talking about weight loss when somebody has to lose weight. We're talking about body recomposition, right? Mm-hmm. So your net loss so far has been 36 pounds. Your actual fat loss is more than that because you've definitely gained muscle density, fascia density, bone density, connective tissue density, and that's an increase in weight, right? So you have an increase in all the lean tissue, decrease yeah. in the fat weight gives us the net number. So you've definitely lost more than 36 pounds of excess body fat. Uh, and that's obvious in your, your progress photos. I mean, the shape of your body is like, it's so obvious um, what's happened to you. So you think you're going to break through. And again, we don't like to put emphasis on the weight number, but we know when there's a goal that we're aiming for that it's reasonable to expect us to get there. Um, when do you think you're going to break through the 180, the 180 mark into the 170s? I hope soon. Um, I'm just, I've kind of like, you know, been sitting here waiting (laughs) for that to happen, (laughs) but I'm just being patient and allowing my body to adjust to, because the last time I was 180, I mean, I didn't look the same as I do right now. Like I said, my body composition is a lot different. This is good. This is really good. Let's talk about this. That's really important. Anybody listening, listen closely to this. Let's explain that a little more. The last time you were 180, Number one, around about when was that? Um, 2013, so okay. eight years ago. Okay. And what were you doing that had you around 180 at that time? Do you remember? I was heavy lifting. Okay. Heavy lifting. Hours of cardio, like that's what I was doing okay. during that time. Hours of cardio, heavy lifting, typical like mass market gym approach. Gym rat. Right? Oh, wait, we're, we're gym bunnies, right? <laughs> now we're gym bunnies. All right, you're the gym bunny. That's what we call you. Yeah. Like. All right. But now <laughs> you're not doing that stuff, right? Instead of a gym rat, you're an at-home gym bunny training this n- new methodology. You're eating you're eating like a like a few nights ago you made one of the recipes from Total Access. So you're kind of eating the way that we're teaching, like healthy, n- nutritious using herbs and spices, not dieting, but eating healthy foods the way we're supposed to, right? So you're doing these two major things differently now. And now you're 180 again. Describe the difference in the 180 so that anybody listening has a, a better idea in their own mind what, what it is that's different. Um, to me, I'm like the more firm right now. But even at 180 right now, like that's what was my, that was my goal weight when I first like started coaching with you, Mm -hmm. remember? And now I don't even want, I want to be smaller than I am now. (laughs) Like I want my goal weight to be actually like 165, something like that. Mm -hmm. It's just different. I can't really, I can't even really explain it, but it is different. Um, My, like my legs are smaller Right. Then when I was 180 before, I mean, it's just, but they're firmer. Yes, 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 yes. This is awesome. Okay. So this is the good stuff. You're firmer, you're more toned, you you're smaller right now. Again, anybody listening, remember she's six feet tall. She started at like two thirty was the height around about right. And the old days she was lifting hard, lifting heavy, you know, probably more bulky than she needed to be. So as you describe it now, you are smaller in size, you are tighter, right? Mm-hmm. You're more toned, you're firmer than you were back then. Even lifting hard and heavy, you're firmer now than you were back then, right? I had more, I had more bulky muscle that if I had to really describe it back right, then. Right, right, right. And that's understandable. Than I do now. 
Yeah, mm -hmm. this is common. Like I see this all the time. You know, women will come to me and they say, "I'm, I'm doing what the local trainers tell me to do. I'm working hard," and they say, "You got to keep pushing and blah blah blah." And you, you know, you're probably eating wrong. They'll tell them. They'll blame it on some crazy stuff, like why they're not getting the exact results, right? And so, and they'll ask, "What am I doing that's got me like?" bulking up the way I don't want to bulk up and not toning down the way I want to tone down, right? And so the answer is what you're experiencing. You have to train differently if you want different results and mm -hmm. also avoid the injuries in the process, right? So you are actually changing your body composition in profound ways. What this, in terms of simplifying your life, uh, so your body's changing, your weight's changing, We've got new goals now, right? We've got new goals and you and I will reconnect. We'll do a little coaching tweak to help, to help break through this 180 barrier. Okay. We'll, we'll reconnect on that. Okay? Um, okay. I have some tricks we could, we could throw into the mix. <laughs> um, I figured that. <laughs> yeah. So um, aside from the obvious physical changes now, what in terms of like simplifying your life and uh, your mindset, has this all done for you? Um, I mean, like I said, I don't focus on the physical aspect anymore. Um, I think the big thing for me is I'm able to work out five to seven days a week with my job and school. So that's a huge thing because before, I mean, it was probably I mean, I was probably doing three to four, maybe if I got, if I was lucky. Um, but I've also, you know, changed jobs. I'm not in the ICU anymore, which is a huge, huge thing for me right. mentally and emotionally. Um, but just like this, it's so conducive to anyone's schedule, I think. Um, and that's why I'm saying I've, I've worked out five to seven days a week for the past year. Right is huge it's it's helpful for my energy sleep better um just all those important things and you stay on track with what you're eating like i've been intermittent fasting like you do um every day and it's just made a huge difference in my life just in, in every aspect right and so by by making this all simpler sustainable and enjoyable um and repeatable where even, you know, anybody, even, you don't even need, obviously you did a lot of this without the home gym system. Like you only, you've only had it for a few mm -hmm. months. Um, you made a ton of progress before you even got the home gym system. Making Absolutely. this, making this simpler and doable at home with just really a few accessories in your body and your own body um, has allowed you to be consistent what has that done for your mindset as compared to when you thought you had to train the old ways in the gym and heavy and push, push, push? Um, I look forward to the training. That's number one. And, you know, I'm more focused on like the more important things, like why I'm actually doing it. It's not for the physical, like the, the aesthetic reason. Right. Um, it's for my internal health, my lo longevity, just like we always, you always t tell us. Yeah. And, you know, I just entered my forties recently. So that's even like more of a reason, like I'm getting older and I want to remain independent and healthy for the rest of my life, not worry about chronic disease or immobility. You know, yeah, this is important. So like we're talking about what we obviously know, believe, and and um, talk about to to help others change their mindsets. The focus on your actual vitals, your your health, uh, your wellness, longevity. You know, taking care of your heart, your bones, your vitals, your organs, uh, all the things that mass population just wants to be medicated for by the doctor. Uh, as you know, you've texted me a few times over the last few months when you're dealing with a certain kind of patient. Um, and most of the time I'll ask you, like, if they, if they took care of themselves, could this have been avoided? Right. And most of the time, the answer is yes. It's strictly mostly lifestyle related that this patient is, you know, in the bed having to be medicated or, uh, 
treated or, or what have you because of their lifestyle. That's what got them there. Right. you so you're like, you're seeing things firsthand as a nurse, um, which reminds me a couple of days ago, you texted me about somebody who was, I'll, I'll let you say, give, give us the summary of that person. Um, so, I mean, it's just a patient that had to have surgery because a deadlifting injury in the gym. So heavy deadlifts, bend over, pick up heavy, heavy weight, and he had to have back surgery and very young. I can't say the age, but right. Younger than me. Right. So, right. So, so, and I appreciate when you text me those, by the way, cause it's, it's a constant reminder that there are so many people that still need help that are suffering this very day. And you're, you're one person, you're in one facility. This is happening millions and millions of times every day all over the world with different people, you know, either ending up in a hospital bed because of their lifestyle choices and not taking care of themselves or going beast mode and doing the things that, that they're being told to do and wrecking their bodies in the process and having to get surgery because of what they just broke in their back or their shoulder or their knee or their neck. I mean, some of this stuff is life changing. Like you, when you mess up your back, sometimes, even if you get surgery, this is a life, this is a lifetime thing you're going to carry around now. And you've got to be really careful, right? We want people to avoid that, right? So that's why we share this, this info. All right. So in terms of your mindset, you mentioned something very important. Your focus now, uh, your focus now is not just the aesthetics, not just the superficial thing, which is what I, what I used to draw you into my world over a year ago when COVID started to have you watch my little, my little teaser videos and take you along the journey of, yes, I'm going to help you fix the things that you're not visibly happy with. And we're going to do it with a different style of training and nutrition than you've been told to do in the past X decades. But we're also going to change your focus to expand it and have you think about the things that are actually much more important than how your thighs look or your buns look or your legs look or your, or your stomach looks or what have you. Yes, those are important, but we get the improvements and the benefits and the changes in those and the results by shifting our focus to the things that are unseen inside of us that are actually the things that are going to keep us alive and functioning in this world for a long, full life. How does it feel to now think that way in terms of how you used to think when you were grinding yourself to a pulp? I mean, it's, it is life-changing. I mean, yes, that sounds cliche, but it is. I mean, if you really think about it, Um, every day I get to wake up and do this workout that's going to benefit me long-term versus going to the gym and getting injured, which I have had happen to me before many times. Um, and there were days that like, I never looked forward to doing the workouts because you don't want to lift heavy all day, every day. I mean, you don't want to do an hour of cardio, like, or eat seven meals a day, like every two (laughs) hours type thing. It's just. This it's has like simplified my, it is, and it's simplified my whole life, honestly. Um, even the food is, is completely different than what, I mean, I was, I'm doing like pescatarian, which mm-hmm. you know that yep. kind of like what you do. Right. Um, but e- even that has, is just so, it's so different than what I was always taught and what I've always known to be the right way, which is not the right way. Right, right. So this is profound. And we're going to wrap it up after this, because I know you got to get to that nail appointment. It's self care Sunday, baby. Um, So the real shift for a lot of people, not just women, men too, guys, listen, like, it's not just for the ladies, like you have to have a mind shift and open yourself up to a new way of going about all of this. Uh, Because like you just heard Lauren say, there are so many things that we're told are the right way to do it if you really want results, when in reality, it just creates dysfunction in your life, in your mindset. Like anybody who thinks you have to walk around eating seven or eight meals a day 
so that you don't go into starvation mode. I mean, that's- You get enough protein. <laughs> <laughs> right, to feed your body enough protein so it processes it. Like, I've got a little bit of muscle on me, right? A little bit. <laughs> right? And I don't go eating eight meals a day, and, and I definitely don't eat like 200 grams of protein every day. It's nonsense. Like, it's pure nonsense, all this mythology. And so we do these podcasts, both video and audio, to show people the truth. It's simpler than you might think. It's easier than you might think. And you can get to where you want to be without having to kill yourself and without having to think you got to eat eight meals a day and do all this crazy stuff. No, 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 no. That's all old school. It's like still carried over from the 80s and 90s. No, there are some people that can do it. They want to do it. They're going to keep doing it. And that's fine. Like, they can have it. It's, it's cool. But for most of us who have real lives, busy lives, it's not for us. So that's why we share this, to bring people new information, to enlighten people, to show people there is a new and better way that, that, that they haven't learned about or seen before. And just like Lauren did about a year ago, she saw this, this crazy guy on the video on Facebook and something made her tune in and listen because I was speaking your language and the rest is history. So before we wrap up, is there, before I wrap it up, is there anything else you want to say to the person who's watching right now? Um, I think, you know, just kind of like, you know, last year, I think I was telling people to just have an open mind to new things because, because your style of training is very, very different from, you know, the other programs out there that are everywhere. And for me, it was, it was about like, having an open mind because when I first you know came into your world I was like oh this is probably not going to work you know I'm used to you know the old the old way of doing things and I think that's the most important thing is is have an open mind and be consistent and have goals that are just beyond like what you want to look like because right. that's not very important honestly I mean <laughs> we're all going to get old and gray <laughs> I would rather be a healthy old and gray person than right. non-healthy. I would rather Funct be able to walk. Right. Yeah, Functional and, function. and capable. Yeah. So awesome. those are the things I would tell someone. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So if you're listening to this uh, on the podcast, on the audio, there is a video. If you want to see the video, just go to joeyatlas.tv. That's joeyatlas.tv. That takes you right to my YouTube channel where the video version of this will be if you're not watching the video. Again, if you want to join us, come get the freebie program, all free updates plus coaching call replays. Go to fitnesstraining.live, fitnesstraining.live. Uh, the other thing is fitness nurse Lauren Lilly. You and I were supposed to meet like, what was it, nine or 10 months ago? <laughs> How long yeah. ago was it? But you know what happened. <laughs> well, tell, tell whoever's listening or watching what happened. I got COVID. <laughs> right. So we were supposed I'm not to laughing, meet. but it's no, but no, yeah. no, no. But the story is is sort of funny. Uh, we were supposed to meet. You were set to come here and visit, right? Yes. You got COVID. It's still, it's still going to happen, though. It's going to happen. So, so we we haven't decided if you're coming here or if I'm coming there, though. We have we have to <laughs> no, tell we about it. And that, yes. might ha that might be happening soon, right? As at the time of this recording, it might be happening relatively soon, right? Yeah, it will. <laughs> Definitely. All right, so, so whoever's watching or listening, there is something going on behind the scenes with Lauren and I. That's, <laughs> that's the only hint we're going to give you. If you want to see what it all is, you're going to have to stay tuned in, watch and listen to see how the story unfolds, okay? It's going to be very interesting. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, I think that's all I'm going to say right now about it, uh, right? I don't want to get myself in trouble, do I? <laughs> <laughs> all right, Lauren, thank you so, so much for the one-year progress update. I look forward to future ones. And I know anybody tuning in is also going to want to follow your progress, uh, especially when they see what, what behind-the-scenes stuff is going on with us. Um, they're going to want to see all the progress. So anybody listening, watching, please share this. 
please come post below the video. Let us know you watch this. Let us know how else we can help you. If you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts or any other podcast platform, please come rate and review it. It's really important that you come and rate the podcast episode and write us a review of what you liked about it and why you're tuning into it and why you're going to continue to tune in. And so that's it for now. Again, episode three, season two, we're going to be back again with episode four. I might even have my co-host here, Lauren, on with me for that episode number four. If not, she will be back for future episodes. And that's it, Lauren. Much love to you. Have an awesome day. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. you for having me again. Yeah, my pleasure. We'll see you soon for the next one, okay? Okay. All right. Happy Sunday. Bye. You too. Bye. <laughs>